Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. I got uh, got a question from somebody asking me if I could cover a little bit uh, on on some three four defensive stuff. So what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to look at uh, at some three four Oki defense stuff, which is basically um, you know to me, which is straight fifty stuff, head up on the nose, head up on the tackles, uh, with three down linemen playing four linebackers, four secondary players behind it. All right, and that's all. Uh, I, that's all I'm going to cover today. I'm not going to get into uh, reduction fronts or different fronts. I'm just going to talk about playing it out of Oki, and we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about a slant and angle package, which essentially is going to get us into uh, at the snap of the ball. It's going to get us into some reduction or some under fronts, but we're not going to talk about playing it as a two gap scheme. We're not going to talk about playing it out of the base fifty front. We're going to talk about it as the Oki front moving uh, slant and slants and angles, and, and how we would. Uh, play some combination coverages behind that. Um, so one of the first things I think you need to look at if you're going to play an Oki defensive package is you need to talk about understanding that, that you're going to have three-way goes or three ways to play uh, that package where you would, um, your slant angles would be to the strength or away from the strength. They could be to the field or away from the field, uh, to the back or away from the back when you're talking about slant, uh, slants and angles. All right. Uh, you also have, um, you know, situations where you are playing two gap with your defensive linemen and then your linebackers and changing your run fit. So your three way go would be slanting towards the strength, slanting away from the strength, playing head up or two gap techniques, uh, which are more base techniques and fundamentals. Today we're going to talk about just uh, base slants and angles. Mostly we're going to talk about uh, slanting strong, putting us into a reduction front and then playing quarter, quarter, half defense behind that or versus two by two, uh, talking about playing uh, two read to both sides, which we can still do with a little bit of flexibility out of the three, four. Uh, the great thing about the three, four is uh, it's tough to dictate where that fourth rusher is coming from. And I'm gonna draw up uh, how I would, you know, the one wrinkle off of slanting strong all the time and then come back and, and angle weak. Um, I think it can still be played with two high structures and mostly is played with two high structures so that you can play split field coverages or you can play combination coverages. I think you get more speed on the field, obviously, when you have more back end players. So now you're playing with four linebackers and four secondary players and only three true defensive linemen, so there's more speed on the field. All right, but you know, it's the it, it's the multiplicity of looks you can get out of the three four to me that makes it uh, such a productive package. And when you get into if you could incorporate playing things to gap and changing how you fit runs and how you uh, how you react to certain block stimulus, then that makes the package um, even more productive. So when you look at playing an Oki type defense, I think what you got to look at is you know the three different versions of attacking it: slanting strong, slanting weak, and playing two gap stuff. For today's argument, we're going to talk predominantly about slanting strong. Then we're going to talk about a wrinkle where we would angle weak and change the coverage behind it and go from split field coverage to closing the middle of the field. So what I've got drawn up right now is, is just a base generic Oki front, which means we're head up on the center, we're head up on the two tackles, we've got four linebackers behind it, we've got four secondary players behind it. So the general two by one sets are pro I. All right, what we're gonna do, generically speaking, we're gonna set the front and the coverage to the multiple receiver side. So right now, I've got it shut left. I do not have the front divorced from the, the uh, secondary play, we are going to travel the front guys and the secondary guys together so that the strong side guys are always going to travel in a pod, the weak side guys are always going to travel in a pod. All right, so when you have traditional two by one sets or pro sets like this, it's real simple. We're going to shut it to the multiple receiver side. So the first thing we're talking about right now is we're talking about a, a slant style of defense where we're going to move to the strength. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to take all right, the down three linemen, and we are going to one gap move them or spark them one gap to the strength. Okay, we are going to bring the what I would call the rush backer. Some people might call him the jack. There's all kind of different terminology. The terminology to me is irrelevant. It's the weak side outside linebacker is going to be the guy that we standard add into the pressure to make him the fourth guy coming off the edge. Now, once we have done that post snap, what we have done is we have put you in an under front or a weak side reduction front. All right, what we've given you is we've given you an A shade, a five, and a nine to the tight end. We've given you a three 
and a 5, once we move, that's essentially the front we've given to you. Okay? What we are going to do is we are going to play a true quarters theory on the front side, and we are still going to play some version of cover 2 on the back side. So we are still playing quarter, quarter, half defense. All right? I talk about it in our 4-2-5 stuff. I talk about it if we went 3-3 stack. It doesn't matter to me. On the back end, we are still playing quarter, quarter, half. The only time, uh, the only time some of this stuff can get muddy is if you're not divorced front or if you're playing field defenses and they put formation into the boundary. You may have to check into cover three. All right? But for today's argument, all we're talking about is base defense, base 3-4 defense, 3-4 structures, two all right, simple formations and how we would play that and make those adjustments. All right, so we're going to slant strong, which is going to put us in an under front. It's going to make your Mike a primarily front side B gap player. You will a front side A gap player on his side. All right, what it's going to do is it's going to give you quarter, quarter, half defense. Your Sam is going to be, now you've got two choices with the Sam. He can be a force player or he can be a read force player. And what I mean by that is versus down blocks by the tight end, okay, he can be a guy that spills and wrong arms and, and then makes the free safety quarters player become all right the force player along with some possible mic scrape stuff depending on how you play it and what the blocking schemes are versus reach techniques or wide zone techniques or stretch techniques your Sam can become the force player and your free safety can then become an alley fitter so you can choose to do it however you want you can read force based off the block at a tight end you can keep that guy as force all the time and make him a box player and then have the free safety run the alley that's up to individual press pre preference how you want to do it all right, but to the quarters coverage side, just to be clear, what I'm talking about is the Sam is a, is a true curl flat player, and he's going to take first thing to the flat man to man. He's going to match two on the wheel. All right, he's the guy that's got to be able to run with two on the wheel. All right, your corner is going to be an all of one player. All right, he's going to be a man on all of one deep or a mod technique. We're going to try and let shallow crosses go. Sometimes we get up there and we aggressively press that player. When we press him in man to man, it's awfully tough to tell him to let shallow crosses go all right so sometimes when we press we allow him to play a meg concept or man everywhere he goes when we're off technique we like to let those shallows go and play more of a mod or a man on everything deep technique okay but depending on what you're trying to do if you like press quarters like some of the stuff pat narduzzi does or you know some of the college guys do if you like press quarters to take away the quick game and, and to impede make the offense or take certain routes out of the offensive tree that's completely up to you just have to understand that we're playing a quarter structure strong and we are playing a cover two structure weak, whether it be sky or cloud support. So we can still play split field coverages. We can still, all right, base out of a two high structure. We don't have to spin or roll anywhere to be a three deep or a middle of the field close team. All right, we can, we can play with our quarter, quarter, half concept, which to me, the two by one, still one of the best, if not the best coverage in the game, playing quarter, quarter, half. Gives you the run support you need, gives you a night guy in the box. All right, it gives you the ability to handle the routes or the vertical play action routes by the tight end. Also gives you the ability to kind of impede some of the quick game, all right, and give you, give you the two-on-one, three-on-two matchup to the weak side. Okay, now, when these guys move, what you have to understand is when you're teaching movement to a defense, they have to understand how to move and they have to understand the landmarks. Okay, so for instance, first thing you got to understand is if this tackle slants to the B-gap, he needs to know that his... Block rack now becomes that guard. He has to understand how to fit off the blocks of that guard. If he gets zone or blocks back at him, he cannot cross the face of that guard. Okay, we're gonna have we're gonna have run fit problems. We're gonna have gap integrity problems. He has to understand when he's moving how to move, trying to stay square or as square as possible on his movement. Because if he turns his shoulders on the movement, he's gonna get blocked down four gaps inside. He's got to stay as square as he possibly can. And he's got to understand that his block wreck is going to be off that guard. If that guard blocks out, he's got to, all right, he's got to strike, separate, lock out, keep his head in that B gap off that guard. If that block, if that guard blocks zone away or disappears inside, he's got to continue to chase the hip of that guard and flatten out a little bit down the line of scrimmage. All right, so he's got to understand that. The nose has got to understand when he starts working, he can't get scooped by the strong guard. He's got to stay in that front side A gap. So he's got to try to not get reached by the center, but he also can't get scooped the other way by that guard because he's going to lose gap integrity. All right. Same thing goes for the end. If there's a tight end in the game, he has to understand that he's got to work to not get reached by that tackle, but at the same time, he can't get scooped by the tight end on runs going away from him. 
So when you're teaching movement to guys, you also have to teach block rec. You can't just move blind and think you're going to penetrate all the time and disrupt plays with penetration. All right, you have to understand how to move with integrity and gap integrity, and those guys have to be guys that can actually read schemes on the run, all right, which sometimes is a little bit more difficult than playing base shade techniques. But basically when you, when you move them, they're becoming a shade anyways. Now, if your philosophy is to move them to penetrate and just let them go, that's totally up to you. I'm sure there's some people that are successful doing that. When I move my guys, they're going to move with a purpose, and they're going to understand what their block rec is, and they're going to understand where their eyes need to go for their block rec which would be different if they were two-gapping from where they were playing. Their eyes are going to go to a different place, and their block rec is going to be done off a different person. Okay, But behind it, it's still quarter-quarter, half coverage, so everything stays real simple on that end. All right? Now, when we look at two-by-two two sets, okay, the beauty of the 3-4 is you can dictate who the fourth rusher is. Okay, So now when we get to two-by-two two sets, I wouldn't, for us, I wouldn't change a thing with our rules. If we set the front, all right, to the side that the back was on, and that's how we declared our strength. All right, nothing would change that for me. I would keep it the same way. The only thing I would change is to make their jobs a little bit easier is I might change who the fourth rusher is. Okay, so with a number two removed weak, okay, and, and our rush outside linebacker, our weak side outside linebacker, knows that he's supposed to be the fourth guy rushing. But he gets a number two weak, okay? All he's going to do is he's going to make a call inside to the will, all right? So he might just call inside and say, hey, hey, check Willie, check Willie, all right? What he's going to tell the will is, all right, he's going to tell the will and the defensive end, and we're going to exchange responsibilities now, all right? So he's going to tell that when he makes that Willie call, He's going to tell a defensive end to take his responsibility and stay outside. He's going to tell a willie to take the end's responsibility, I'm sorry, the tackle in this terminology. He's going to tell a willie to take his job, and he's going to tell a willie to go in the B-gap so that we get that reduction look on the backside. So we still have a 3 and a 5 on the backside. So we've got that reduction look away from the strength. The nose is still going to go one gap strong, and the end is still going to go one gap strong. Okay. So what we've done is we've changed who the fourth rusher is because we have a number two removed. Remember, this is a 3-4 outside linebacker that should be able to do things in coverage. That's why you're playing a 3-4. If it's a defensive end that you bring all the time, okay, if this guy is not a, an outside linebacker that can cover, then what you're going to do is you're going to want to just bump your linebackers to make it more of a 4-3 scheme Make your will linebacker your palms dropper, slide your mic inside a little bit, and it would almost look like a 4-3 scheme, all right, or a 4-1 box at the snap. But because this is a 3-4 scheme, and the flexibility and the, vers the versatility in the defense is having an outside linebacker weak that can rush or drop, now here's where you can get into some more, all right, uh, variation with what you're doing. So by making that will call, what we're going to do is we're going to make the will go in the B gap, we're going to make the tackle stay outside as a five technique, and we're going to stunt and move, all right, the nose in the end. Snap of the ball, we are in a reduction front, all right? To our strong side, we have an A and a five. To our weak side, we have a three and a five, all right? We are still going to play the same theories of defense. We're going to play palms on both sides. Doesn't mean we have to. Two by two, doesn't mean we have to. Versus certain splits, we may lock it and play man-to-man. -man, okay? Okay, versus certain splits, we may play true quarters concepts, although we won't play quarters on both sides unless they were uh, true reduced splits by numbers two, by, by a number two. We would normally play quarters on one side, all right, and then the back side we would either lock or play a cover two scheme depending on where the ball is, all right, so that we help our integrity in the box a little bit. I don't like thinning out the box with a five-man box and playing quarters with uh, my outside linebackers outside of number two. I also don't like playing quarters with my outside linebackers inside of number two because to me in high school with what I deal with, there's no way for me to tell that kid to be part of the run fit and play number two on the wheel. Now there are some college teams that do it, there are some guys that teach it, I don't feel good doing it. So in order for me to play quarters, I would physically have to take my outside linebacker and play him outside the number two receiver. That's the only way I personally feel comfortable playing quarters versus two removed. 
Does it make it right? No. Does everybody do it that way? No. I don't feel good telling a kid that he is the wheel player of number two, playing it from inside leverage, and telling him he's part of the run fit. All right? Not something I like doing. So we don't have to play two read to both sides. That's how we set up as a coverage team. So in my 3-4 defense, that's how I would play it. Okay? But you can change that by playing a side that's, that's two read with a side that's locked man. You can play a side that is quarters with a side that is locked man or cover two. You can play a side that is quarters with a side that is two read. All right? Split field coverages give you the diversity to play different coverages to different formations and different looks, okay? But to a two-by-two two team, all right, if you're going to be a one-gap slant angle team, and we're talking about slanting strong right now, this is how we would do it. We would make the outside linebacker with a two removed to his side. We would let him make a will call to tell the will to go, and that would tell the five technique to stay outside in the C-gap because the willy is going to go in the B-gap. Now, could you make a will call? and keep everything the same with the movement? Sure you could. All right, personal preference. You can make a will call, you could keep the slant the same for all these guys, and you could bring the willy up off the edge. All right, you most certainly can do that. All right, it's up to you to determine what you think is easier for your kids to do. If that angle call, you don't want it to be checked, and you make a will call, let the three guys up front angle and let the will replace that rush or weak side outside linebacker. Perfectly fine. First way I drew it up is, is when you make that will call, you can leave the five outside and let the will go through the B gap. Perfectly fine. Up to you. All the gaps end up the same. Reduction weak. All right. A shade five technique strong. Not a problem. All the run gaps, all the fits stay the same. Now, when you do that, what you got to understand now is you've got a backside A gap unaccounted for. So you've got to be able to teach that inside my linebacker versus certain zone sets. All right, if he gets zoned away, you may want that mic over the top to that A-gap now and let your outside backer fold that open B-gap. If you are just straight angling and there's no other stunts involved to two by two and you know that that front side A-gap is going to be an open gap and that's a far fold in for this weak side outside linebacker, some teams think it's real easy, one gap, one back, one gap. So if he gets zoned away, just take the mic and put him in that front side A-gap right now. There is no two-gap read. They're at the center. The nose isn't playing behind the head of any blocks. We know we're angling that way, so when the back goes zone or we get those zone reads, Mike goes to the A-gap right now. Okay? Some people like to do different things with that backer depending on the movement of the line so that they can get a plus one on the quarterback. Because right now in this situation, if we got the zone here, what we would have to understand, I would take this defensive end and play him as a traditional five technique if... I wouldn't slam him away outside if I was going to ask him to possibly chase the back. If I was going to leave him as a box player, then I'm okay with him being head up and moving outside because he's going to box the inside zone play anyways. If I wanted to take the B gap away, all right, if I wanted to take the B gap away by chasing, I would play this kid in a traditional five technique so that if he gets an inside zone block, if he gets this scheme here, now we can chase the zone play and put that player on the quarterback. Now, again, some teams like to add the mic into that rock back fit to get one and a half on the quarterback. It's all up to how you're doing. Basically, on the backside, zone away, we can take the B gap away two different ways. The five technique can do it, and this guy can play the scrape or, or the quarterback, or the five technique can box and this guy's got a long fold back inside to the B-gap. They're both perfectly fine. It's just a matter of how you want to play. All right, I've, I've heard and read some people that play shotgun as box and under center as spill. It's all up to the defensive coordinator. The biggest thing you have to understand is do what you feel comfortable doing, teach what you're doing, and make sure the kids understand what you're doing. All right, where I've struggled in the past is when we have some different schemes on and one's a box scheme and one's a spill scheme, and two guys do different things. One guy boxes, one guy spills, doesn't fit. If the end is a spill player and you're not fitting your runs that way with your linebackers, then you're going to have a little bit of an issue. Okay. If the end chases the dive and that guy folds the B-gap and you have no quarterback player, there's a problem. If the end boxes and that backer sits outside, you have a problem. As long as they work in conjunction with each other to fit 
that B gap and C gap or that inside zone and quarterback in the option game, as long as they work in conjunction, you are fine. Everything will take care of itself because it's one back, one gap, you have all your gaps accounted for. I know it's not that simple. I know better defenses equate their numbers a little bit better sometimes, but very simple base philosophy, one back, one gap. The thing that's changed that is quarterback runs, so one back is really becoming two back in, in essence. So now you have isolation power and different plays that the quarterback can run instead of just making it tailback runs. If the tailback runs the ball, you can get away with one back, one gap. You can fit all those gaps. You're fine. You won't have a problem. It's when the quarterback starts running the ball that you'll end up a guy short. Okay? So in two by two, that's how I would handle it in a slant angle, okey, all right, defense. All right, we would still angle away. We would set our coverage up to be two read or palms on both sides. We'd make the will call from the weak outside linebacker. That's what adds in some flexibility to the 3-4 defense. Okay? If we got three by one, I'm just going to show you the standard way we would play three by one and why we would play it that way. All right, so if we got three by one and we had just our slant, we used to call this field slant cover six. When I started, I started off uh, as a a uh, good friend of mine was, uh, was my coach in college, and he was a defensive coordinator in college. He was my receiver coach for a year. All right, great, great buddy of mine taught me how to play field defense, and he taught me how to play. We played it out of a reduction front, so we played an eagle front, and we played, we played it as, as a shaded front. We didn't always move to it, but it was basically always field, cover six. And then we had formation into the boundary checks where we would check the 3D. But field cover six meant quarters to the field, half to the boundary. That's essentially what this idea is. It's quarter, quarter, half. So we would still keep the angle theory on. So the angle theory would be, okay, I'm sorry, the slant theory. This is a slant theory, not an angle theory. I'm going to draw angle next. This is a slant theory going strong. So we are slanting to what we call strong. We are bringing, because that outside linebacker only has a number one remove, he's going to be the fourth guy coming off the edge. Three technique, five technique, a shade, five technique on the front side. Okay. The way we would handle three by one in base is what I call solo. Okay, a lot of people call it, it, it's several different things. I've heard it called Gilligan, I've heard it called Poach, I've heard it called Steel, I've heard it called, uh, you know, um, some people call it Triangle. It, it doesn't matter what you call it. As soon as I describe it, everybody's going to know what it is. It's basically two read on this side so that what I call palms so that these three players keep the same job, okay? Those three players keep the same job on that side. You don't change anything for them. The weak safety is going to be part of the concept front side. He is going to have to pull your number three vertical, okay? I call it solo because the weak safety tells this corner, you're solo, and that, bat, that will linebacker has to know you're solo. That means they're going to play man-to-man -man on the one, Man to man on the back out your way. So if the back comes out that way, the wheel's got a man to man. So that's why I call it solo. It was always the, the check we called solo. All right. Solo tells you you're by yourself because I'm going to help the trip side so that my Mike linebacker doesn't have to, in palms, doesn't have to pull, or in quarters, doesn't have to pull a number three that is a wide receiver and run with him vertical. So we're going to use the backside safety to do that. Okay. Why is that the number one check for me when I was a 3-4 defense? Because I don't like a lot of the things my Sam linebacker, if he's a Sam linebacker body type, I don't like a lot of the things he can do. I had better do things that he can do. I don't like him matching vertical routes by a 2 or a 3, so I have to keep coverages in where he might be a wheel player of 2 or 3, okay, or a curl flat player but not a straight vertical match player because we're a 3-4 personnel. Now, when we're 4 two, 5 I choose to play trips a different way because of the body type that I'm playing at that Sam linebacker position. But if I was a 3-4 team, that's how I would handle 3 by one okay? So what we did is we talked about angling, okay, all right, or uh, slanting towards the strength, all right, slanting towards the strength in an Oki defense, and we talked about it to pro, we talked about it to 2 by 2 we talked about it to 3 by one We talked about it with split field coverage, middle of the field, open concepts. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw up the number one change up to that look. 
All right, and it was something that we always did out of our field package. It was real easy to do, okay? And because when we were when we were this style of defense, we always had to teach cover three, okay? And 15 years ago, we played cover three as country cover three. We didn't play it as a pattern read, pattern match cover three like a lot of people are doing now. We just played it as a spot drop cover three and... and it was easier for us to do. We didn't base out of cover three, so the passing game that we saw in high school was real easy for us to just uh, country cover three spot drop. But we always had to talk about playing cover three because it was one of our formation into the boundary checks. All right. So the change up for us all the time, when we would be an angle team, the biggest change up for us and the one that we got the most pro productivity out of was something that we called angle three swap. So the angle, as opposed to the slant, slant told us we were going strong, angle told us we were going away from strength, okay? So now, in the, the way we could protect ourselves in, with our movements, okay? The way we could protect ourselves with our movements is always have a movement that can go away from the strength, with the movement that goes to the strength. So whether it be to the tight end or away from the tight end, to the back or away from the back, to the field or away from the field. Always have a movement that is counter to the base movement that you use. So we got a ton of mileage out of this very simple stunt, angle three swap, okay? Angle told us that we were now gonna go away from the strength. So we angled away from the strength. Angle told us that the strong side linebacker on the outside, the Sam, was going to be part of the movement. So versus the tight end, what we told the Sam was you are going to go off the edge of inside blocks and you are going to go underneath outside blocks. So he had a tooth or tail read on the tight end when he was part of the angle stuff. If there was no tight end, it was easy. He was coming off the edge almost like a five technique. When it was a tight end, we gave him a tooth or tail read. All right. If you see the tail of that tight end, all right, go off his tail. If you see the teeth of that tight end, go across his face. All right. That's it. That we made it that easy for that kid. More football terminology: down block, off his ass, out blocks, cross his face. We just made it tooth or tail. Okay. If you can see his teeth, cross his face. If you can see his tail, go off of that. All right. And then we angled the front. Now. Because we angled the front that way, we couldn't play our split field coverages on the back end because we were losing a guy to play quarters. We didn't have the sand to play quarters anymore, and we didn't set the rush over there to give us an extra defender. So because we sent the stunt that way, what we did was we spun the free safety down, and we spun the weak safety to the middle, and we played 3D. Okay? So you're... you're you ended up with a curl flat guy weak. You ended up with a with your will linebacker as a hook curl guy. You ended up with your Mike linebacker as a hook curl guy. And then you ended up with your free safety as a curl flat player. All right? And we were country cover three. We landmarked and, and dropped to those spots. Okay? We landmarked and dropped to those spots, which was good enough for us in high school. Okay? Could we do it at the next level with uh, sophisticated passing games? No. We'd have to probably pattern read, pattern match. Uh, Rip Liz match or such stuff like uh, Nick Saban started doing because in spot drop country cover three good passing teams will eventually stretch you in a lot of different ways and put receivers in spots that you can't get to if you're just spot dropping. This was a great change up for us. It was an easy coverage to play. All right, and it balanced all the angle stuff, okay, and the slant stuff together. So if we based out of slant and we said field slant cover six, and that was how we played 60% of the night, angle was a great change up for that. Remember that in that Oki front, you want three-way goes. You want strong movements, you want weak movements. So angle was the perfect uh, counter for us to slant. And we just made it real simple, angle three swap. Angle meant away from strength, three swap meant cover three with the rush end, the, I'm sorry, the rush linebacker and the Sam linebacker swapping responsibilities. Okay? That's all they did. They swapped to where the rush dropped and the Sam went. That's all we did. And we kept it with 3D behind it. So the call was angle three swap, 
our base call was always field cover six. If it was Oki, it was, you know, it was Oki field slant cover six. If we were playing field cover six, that put us in a shade. We were already in the under, under front. If we moved to the under front out of Oki, you know, we made it a slant cover six call. Then when we changed, our change up was angle three swap. Three swap was the coverage. Cover three swapping the responsibility between the weak side outside linebacker and the strong side outside linebacker. Okay? So that's how we played uh, a lot of our defense 15 years ago or when I started as a 3-4 guy. It was slant angle stuff. It was slanting to the strength with quarter, quarter, half. It was angling away with three deep behind it. Okay? And then the beauty of the... Uh, you know, the beauty of the 3-4 stuff is when you don't know where that fourth rusher is coming from and you have more players on the field that can drop, the 3-4 was always more conducive, all right, to zone-type pressures and very simple zone-type pressures, and you could do them from both sides. Okay, so you could run America's Blitz. All right, you can run America's zone pressure, which most people know is America's zone pressure, and you can run it from the strong side with a two long stick, two gap move. Mike and the Sam coming there. Free safety spins down. Weak safety spins to the middle. All right, seam curl flat. Number three or middle hole dropper. Seam curl flat there. All right, and you're three under three deep with America's blitz coming from the strong side, okay? You could change the pass of these guys. All right, you could change the pass of these guys and you can make it to where the end was the outside part.